Hello, in this demonstration I'd like to show you how you can use a voltage source in PSPICE based on a text file of uh, time and voltage points. So let's do that. In this uh, example that I'm showing you right now, I just have a voltage source of 1 volts, constant voltage, uh, that's going in and supplying voltage to a resistor and capacitor circuit. I want to take a look at the voltage at node in. I'm expecting that to just be 1 volt, and it will be. Um, but what I want to do is I want to then manipulate that voltage by uh, using a bunch of data points. So there's my one volt in presently, uh, nothing too interesting yet. What I'd like to do is swap this part out for one that points to a file. Uh, the file that I'd like to use is this one right here. So here's a demo file that I want to use, which just says at time zero, I want it to have a voltage of zero. At time one, a voltage of one. At time two, a voltage of uh, 0.5 volts, etc. So these are the time and voltage points that I'd like to use. It's a very simple file. We can obviously make them more complex if we'd like to, but for now, let's just start with this. So on my D drive, there's a file called demo.txt that I would like to use. Let's get rid of this voltage source by hitting delete. And in the source library, which I'm looking at right now, there is a part called vpwl underscore file. That's the part I want to use right here. I want to use vpwl underscore file. pwl just refers to piecewise linear, and that's just a collection of data points, kind of like connect the dots. So that's what I want to use. I want to use a connect the dots uh, voltage source that connects to a file. So let's change this file here to uh, D drive and that's connecting to demo.txt. I'm going to hit OK. And if I run the simulation now, hopefully it's going to pull those data points from my text file, bring those in, and we can see that it did exactly that. So there we go. We see a voltage source now based on uh, the waveform from a text file. We'll notice here, though, that if I extend the simulation to, let's say, 10 seconds and rerun that, it's uh, just going to flatline at that point. Oftentimes, if you do something like this, you would want uh, the simulation or the, the voltage source to be repeating. So if you'd like that voltage source to be repeating, you can accomplish that very easily in Capture. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this into my clipboard, the path to where that file is, and I'm going to delete this voltage source and exchange it instead for one that points to a file. So vpwl underscore f underscore repeat forever is the one that I'd like to use instead. So let's use that one, and I'm just going to paste the old path that I had for the previous file into there, so demo.txt is now in this one. It's just the same, same type of thing except for it repeats forever now. So let's run that, and now when we run that, we're going to be able to see that it does indeed repeat forever. So that looks great. In this case, it just repeats two times. If I had my simulation running longer, it would repeat more and more. Okay, so that's very good. Uh, what if we had a more complex file that we'd like to use as our source? We can easily get a more complex file. Oftentimes, people will get these from oscilloscopes. In our case, we're just going to get them from our measurements here. So let's uh, put a probe. Uh, I'm just going to put another voltage probe on this output here and go back to the results. And now we can see that there's uh, the effects here of the capacitor are seen in this red waveform. What I'd like to do is take this red waveform, also called V out. I'd like to use that as the input source for this circuit. So what you can do is you can just copy that one, select the waveform, it'll turn red. Hit Control C on your keyboard to copy that into your clipboard. I'm going to go back to my uh, my .txt file. I'm going to just paste this into a different one. I'll paste it into a file called Demo2, also on my D drive. And I'm going to delete out the header row because I don't need that in there. In my case, uh, the files are separated by a lot of spaces. It really doesn't matter. They can be separated by a single space. In these, some are even separated by tabs, tab spaces. It doesn't matter what they're separated by, just as long as they're separated by something. It's going to be able to read that just fine. So let's save that off, demo2.txt. Let's go back to capturing and just change this to demo2.txt and uh, run that again. And now what we're going to see is uh, the waveform that was previously red is now green. It's now the input waveform. And we're seeing the uh, additional effects of the capacitor again in the red waveform here. So what we're doing is we're bringing in a large text file that we can see right here. So here's our large text file and uh, seeing the effects of that text file in our circuit. 
Thank you for watching the video. Stay tuned for another one where I show you how you can generate random noise and insert that into a circuit using the same techniques. Thank you.